Hello beautiful people. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos. I think if you go back and look at one of the old ones, I mean this this hair is probably a good and the beard is probably a good indicator how long it's been since I've done this. I got out of the film game for a little bit, uh, just kept all the cameras and everything, just decided to kind of step away for a little while while all the uh, craziness was going on in the world because the prices of everything were just shooting through the roof, which they still are, but Anyways, I started going to a lot of garage sales again lately because a lot of people are having garage sales and I find all kinds of cool stuff that I just have to buy. I have to bring it home. I have to buy it. It's, you know, it's like five or ten dollars. So today I have a ten dollar camera that I purchased at a estate sale a little while back. Pretty cool. You know it's old because it's in this old leather, gross leather case. Um... It screws into the bottom, like a good leather case would for these things. I've unscrewed it to make this easier. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a Argus A2F 1939 pre-war uh, 35mm camera. It is the first American-made 35mm camera to use the new 135 35mm film that had come out. So that's pretty cool. American-made. Uh, at the time, it was top of the line. This this was it, man. This was the bee's knees. I don't know if they say that kind of stuff. I don't know what was top of the line in 1939, but the bee's knees. We're just going to say that. It is a Bakelite body um, here, uh, which is cool. It's got that Art Deco-y look to it. You know, this is a cool like shelf piece for some people, which is probably what you buy. I think if you go look at them on Etsy, people are wanting you know, 60, 70 bucks for these, not because they work, but because they just kind of look cool and you could set them somewhere uh, in your house. It has an aluminum backing on it. Uh, it weighs about 414 grams. It's typical weight for an old camera like this, just an old 35 millimeter camera before they started using plastic and everything. So, well, Bakelite's like plasticky stuff. So anyways, um, and it has this, this cool old school leather case. And it's got this like purple inside. It's like the Crown Royal bag, kind of purple. It's pretty. Um, I don't know why they hide that inside. They put some of that on the outside. But anyways, it's pretty cool. We're going to see this collapsible lens. So the lens comes out like that. It's got this little uh, tabs on here and some tab places here. You just push it in and turn it to collapse it down. And to pop it out, you do that. Now, when you uh, focus this thing out, extend it all the way out, and that's it fully out. Obviously, when you go to push it in, you can't collapse it, so you have to push, pull it back in. As you can notice as I'm doing this, one of the things I don't like about this camera is how hard it is to focus, because you have to cram your fingers between the tabs. So there's this little tab right here. You can see my finger go behind. You have to kind of cram your fingers back behind those um, and that lip to get in there and focus. So it makes it a little difficult to focus. Um, but you know, you're just focusing based on distance with this thing. So there's nothing in here in the viewfinder that's going to help you with focus other than just framing. It's going to say, Oh, I'm framing it. There is nothing happening with focus. You know, there's none of the overlaying uh, spheres or, uh, trapezoids or any of the other things you would see in those. So you just have to guess and say, how, how far I'm away am, am I? There's a very tiny, tiny little notch mark in there to indicate where to focus it. So I could see that being a little difficult in certain lighting situations. Um, and also, I'm getting older and it's getting harder to see with these things. So, uh, you know, I may be doing one of these numbers or handing it to my kid and saying, hey, can you put this on three? Uh, so anyways, but uh, let's talk about the lens. Uh, it's a helical focus uh, with a range of 15 inches to infinity, infinity and beyond. 15 inches is pretty close for an old school camera like this. So um, best guess from what I could see online from folks uh, was that they indicated this was probably a 50 uh, millimeter lens that's in here um, that you focus out. So you know, I think it's a best guess. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything definitive on that uh, with this thing. So you know, plan accordingly. Um, it's a, I can't say this word, anastigmat lens. Say it with me. Anastigmat 
I'm saying it horribly wrong. I'm going to have to go f find somebody that knows what they're hell they're talking about and have them tell me how to say that word correctly. Uh, but it's F uh, 4.5 to F 18 um, speed. Typical speeds are um, the TB 125 uh, up to one two hundredth of a second to adjust these. So for the F stop, there is a tiny little tab right here and you're going to adjust that for the speed. There is another one. Um, sorry, it's right here. So on the speed, you turn the ring itself. So you can notice like as I'm turning the ring, this lens actually moves as well. So if you're turning the ring, you're going to have to hold the shutter. That's the shutter. Okay. And mine's sticky. So we'll see how that works when I shoot some film in it. But to change the speed, you're going to have to, you know, probably hold that bit or hold your finger on there to change that over and get it onto your different uh, speeds. And again, the f-stops, it's pretty cool from this perspective. If you look at the front of the camera and as you move it, you can see it track there, but also it tracks on the top. Um, let's see if I can get that in focus. It's kind of difficult, uh, but it'll track here on the top of it as well. You can kind of see it moving around in there. So that's what's going on with the lens. Let's talk about the last like really cool thing about this camera. And I have a bunch of old cameras and I've never seen this on an old camera. So I don't know. I had to look this up because I had no idea what the hell this was. So it has an extinction light meter. Okay. And it has this cool table on the top to help you calculate your speed and f-stop in certain situations. And the way this meter works, as you can see between here and here, there's this opening, okay? When you look at it from your, from this side, it's gonna be, I don't know that I can get it to show up on this, this, show, this uh, uh, video here, but when you look through there, there is a neutral density filter that just steps down from this side is the brightest to this is the darkest. Uh, I'm sorry, the opposite. This would be the brightest. So if you're pointing to the sun, this would be the neutral density filter you would need for the brightest light. And this is for the least light, okay, going this direction. So as you look through here, you line up, you move this little guy and you line it up with the square and the filter for the image that you feel like it should be. So you would say, you know, if I'm looking directly at this light here, you know, looking through here, uh, what we're going to do it right now, looking through here, um, I would say, I probably have to back away. I can't do it so close. I'd say right about there, uh, looking directly at this really bright light is probably where I want to be. Okay. So what's cool is it lines up with the chart and then you take the slide and you pick down on the bottom. It tells you on the bottom, it says bright, average, cloudy, um, or light. That's those are the options. Uh, and so when you change it, you there's a little arrow in there, and you just line it up at the arrow. And so on this one, I'd say this is pretty bright, yeah, because I'm looking into a ring light that's really bright. So I'd move it up to bright, and then this thing is going to tell me, no, you should not shoot this at f 4.5, but you could shoot this at 6.3, at 200. Right, so it's got the chart on there to tell you what exposure settings to set your camera to um, based on that little stop down ne uh, neutral density filter plus the chart that's on the top that lets you go through that. And I'm so amazed with that. It was like the coolest little gadget that's on there. And I'm gonna have to go look up some more information because I've never seen, again, I've never seen that on a camera that I've owned personally. Uh, and never seen anybody really talk about it. Uh, and so I had to look it up and find some information. And there wasn't any videos that I could find that were explaining that. Um, maybe I should find one, do one on just that part of it. But I found a couple of blogs and a couple of people explained it in plain English and made sure, you know, that, that like people could understand what it meant. So, but again, you just look through there, you line this thing up um, with the shot you think you want to take. And then it lines up with the, with the meters on there. And then brightness, you know, so forth. Um, this one is interesting. I, I, it goes all the way down to, uh, 
um, an F20, um, but this doesn't do an F20. It only does F18. So I'm not sure what the bottom piece of that, why, why it would go just keep stepping up there. Um, and it's kind of got these two, two tabs. They don't move separate from each other. Um, actually they do move separate from each other. Um, uh, so that's interesting. I, I would have to play around with this a little bit more and see, oh look, they go all the way together. So yeah, so again, I gotta learn how to use this, uh, and there's not a lot of information. And actually, I found the manual for this on uh, online, and I, it doesn't even explain what to do with that, with this this thing here. So anyways, uh, if you know what it is, and you have a link, and you've got some really cool information or a video you can find, drop it in the comments below. I would love to learn about it, um, just for my own personal edification. Uh, so anyways, I appreciate you guys watching bearing with me while I talk about these and get back in the swing of making these these things. One last thing I didn't show, it's got a leather tab. You push this button on the side and the whole back comes off. And when the whole back comes off, it's got the model number uh, and I'm assuming that's a serial number of some sort and you know, you've got your, your uh, wind here for the top and then one to go the other way uh, to rewind. And it's got a counter. Uh, up here as well with the reset button so you can reset the count um, after you get it in there and get it loaded you can reset it back to zero so this is the argus a2f um 35 millimeter 1939 pre-war 1939 camera thanks again for watching guys i look forward to making more of these videos and i really appreciate all the likes and the comments and the views from you guys so you guys go be great go have fun shooting some film we'll see y'all later